What's going on YouTube? Josh here checking in with another episode of the Research Review Series. This week's article comes from the February 2014 edition of the European Journal of Applied Physiology. This was a study by Jacob Wilson and colleagues uh, out of the University of Tampa. And this was a study looking at the supplementation of HMB free acid. So basically, if you have never heard of this before, HMB is a metabolite of the branch chain amino acid leucine. Now, this substance, HMB, has been studied for quite a while, and there have been numerous studies that have indicated relatively positive results regarding the, its effects on muscle mass, strength, and things like that. The issue is that much of the previous literature had various issues with the research methodologies. They weren't very well controlled, and up to now there hasn't really been a tremendous amount of literature studying specifically trained populations. So a lot of the current literature focuses on the untrained population. There are a few studies looking at people who have uh, experienced lifting weights, but not a whole lot. And finally, in this study, they looked at a different form of HMB, specifically the HMB free acid. So basically that is just has a greater potency and it enters the bloodstream at a quicker rate. So in this study, there were 20 resistance trained males who were assigned randomly to receive either a placebo or to receive the HMB free acid. They were put through a rigorous workout protocol and there were various measurements of their strength, lean body mass, etc. throughout the protocol. Now suffice it to say, without boring you guys with all of the methods, that overall the researchers did an excellent job of controlling for many of the variables that could be confounding in these kinds of studies, such as exercise performance, diet, things like that. Now, one thing to note about this study in particular is how they did the training protocol. So essentially, this was a total of 12 weeks of training, where the first eight weeks was a periodized program focusing primarily on the compound lifts, the squat, bench, deadlift, with some accessory work in there as well. During that period, it was a pretty intense protocol where most individuals would probably have uh, quite a bit of difficulty keeping up with that. And then there was a two-week period at the end of those first eight weeks that was a period of overreaching. If you're not familiar with that, that's basically um, a portion of training where you intentionally try and push through your limits. So in this case, what they did is they increased the frequency from three days a week to five days a week, and they incorporated additional, an additional day for using the Wingate bike, which if you haven't checked out, I encourage you to go on YouTube and search uh, Wingate. There's, uh, you'll see it's pretty intense. So anyway, after that two week period of overreaching, there was a two week period of a taper where they essentially kind of backed off a little bit and let the body recuperate. Now, one thing that I do want to mention about this study is the fact that these individuals who were in this study were people who had a lot of experience lifting weights. These were not your average gym goers. These were people who were really, um, you know, people who responded very well to exercise in general. Okay? And this protocol was brutal. So the results of this study need to be looked at in that context. And I actually spoke to Dr. Jacob Wilson, the, the head author of the study, uh, at a recent conference at the University of Tampa, and he, he echoed those, those uh, sentiments that really the people who were in this study, the, the 20 males in the study, were really top-notch weightlifters, people who, who you know, were a little bit more than your average recreational weightlifter who just go to the gym here and there. These are guys that tend to respond very well to exercise, and the exercise protocol that was used in this study would probably cripple most people lifting weights. So please keep that in mind when I go through the results. Okay, so let's look at the actual results from this study. What happened to the overall strength of the participants from the beginning, you know, week zero to week 12? Well, in the, the group that was receiving the HMB free acid, their strength, which was measured essentially by the combination of their squat, bench, and deadlift, their powerlifting total, improved 18% whereas the placebo group improved 6%. How about their strength during that overreaching period? Well, how is that affected? Well, you know, you can think logically, if you are already in a very intense training cycle without any deloads for eight weeks, and then you nearly increase your total work volume for that week by almost double, right? Because you're going from three days a week to five days a week, you would expect that you would not be able to recover adequately and your strength would go down. So the HMB free acid group, their strength did in fact go down by 0.4%, so pretty small. 
the placebo group, well, their strength was reduced by 4.5% during that overreaching period, so pretty substantial difference. How about their peak power? So peak power was measured primarily using the Wingate test, and in this case, the HMV free acid group improved by 18%, whereas the placebo group improved by 12%. And finally, how about lean body mass? This is what I think a lot of people who train are concerned about, right? You know, am I putting on some good quality muscle? Well, in the HMV free acid group, they improved by 11%, whereas the placebo group improved by 3%. So quite a bit of a difference between those two groups. Now, when I actually looked at the data a little bit more closely, I took some of the data that was in the charts from the study and I put them into Excel so that way I could make some graphs and see it a little bit more visually. And what I found was pretty interesting. Essentially, if you look at the differences between uh, the HMB free acid group and the control group for both strength and lean body mass, you'll notice that throughout the entire study, the group receiving the HMB free acid is definitely outdoing the placebo group. But what you will find is that that difference becomes quite dramatic after that period of overreaching. You'll see that basically from weeks 8 to week 12 is where you see the biggest gap, so to speak, between the HMB free acid and the placebo group. Now, why would this be? Well, we know that HMB free acid, or HMB that's previously been studied, we know that the mechanism by which it works likely has to do with mitigating some of the effects of muscle damage. So during that period, essentially you're able to stave off some of those issues of muscle damage and get maximal benefit out of that period of time. So what is the practical implication of this study? Well, first off, you can't go out and, you know, go to run to GNC, buy yourself some HMB free acid, because this stuff isn't even on the market yet. But even when it does drop on the market, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out and buying some yourself. I think the results of the study were pretty dramatic. I don't know of any other supplement that sees this kind of extensive gains in strength and lean body mass. That being said, there was a very specific group of individuals who participated in this study. So what I would like to see is some additional research replicating these results. And then in that instance, if we're able to replicate these results, I would say that HMB free acid would potentially be an excellent supplement for somebody who fits this demographic. Somebody who is a trained individual who is really willing to put in a serious amount of work in the gym and work probably much harder than most people realize. You know, if you're an average gym goer and you know, you're just looking for a little bit of an edge, I really don't think that the HMB is, is the supplement for you. I think that the bottom line is you need to really be pushing yourself in order to get the maximum benefit out of the supplement. Obviously, we'll have to see some additional research, and until then, we'll just have to wait for an another research review for me to look at some further research on the HMB free acid. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. If you'd like to see any studies uh, looked at specifically, please definitely let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to give the video a like if you liked the video, and if you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time.